second week. Um, we're going to start off with another pretty simple app. It's called Guess the Number. Um, basically, the idea is you're going to be asked, um, the, the app is going to generate a random number, and then you're going to be presented with an option to type in a number. Um, if the number you type in is lower than the number that it came up with, it's going to tell you to shoot higher. If you type in a number that is higher, then it's going to tell you to shoot lower. Um, and if you get the exact number, it's going to say, congrats, um, you got it. So not anything complex. You know, you'll see as we go through it. Um, so I guess a little bit about me. I'm a third year CS major. Um, my threads, louder. <laughs> my threads are people intelligence. Uh, I started learning iOS development about like 15 months ago. Um, came to clubs like these. And fun fact, I can play the piano. Um, <clears throat> um, so today we're going to learn about optionals, um, alerts, um, how to create random integers, um, the view to load method, and marks and comments. Um, so with alerts, this is kind of like the, the steps to go through. We're going to create the alert, and we're going to create the action for the alert. This will be the action, the got it, and the play again button. Um, and then we're going to add the actions to the alert, and then we're going to present the alert on the screen. Um, so you'll see soon. So first, I'm going to talk about optionals for a second. Um, so. Basically, optionals are a type that we use in Swift that allows you to be, or I guess it allows you to create something that you're not sure if it's going to be nil or if it's going to be the type that you gave it. Um, so basically, when you create it, you're saying, this might be a string or it might be nil, we're not sure. Um, but basically, Swift allows you to create those um, safely. And if you want to use them, you like have to unwrap them and use them like that. So we'll see in the code when we start writing. But before we talk about that, let's talk about constants and variables. I'm sure you guys are familiar with these. Um, in Swift, to create a constant, you have to say let name and then equal the string that you're given. Um, and then you can't change it. That's how constants work. You see, we try to say name equals to cal, we'll get an error. Um, but with variables, it's different. You see bar today equals Tuesday. You are able to change it to a different string and you're going to get one to you try to change it. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So, like I said, optionals, they're types that you create, and basically you're saying this might be a string, this might be a nil, or this might be an integer, it might be a nil, we're not sure. Um, so, in this instance right here, let college equal, let college be of type string, this is not an optional. Um, so, basically, this has to be a string. If it's not a string, you can't use it. If you try to use it, it'll say cannot use without being first initialized. Um, but in this instance, bar graduation year of type int um, optional. This can be nil, or it can be an integer, and Swift basically doesn't know. Um, and basically, this allows you to use it. I mean, you can use this to your advantage. It comes up, comes in handy, like when you need, when you're like not sure if like, kind of like if you have like text input and they haven't entered any text, that's nil. But if they have entered text, it turns into a string. Um, so it's helpful like that. So right here, you can truly treat it as if it is nil. So you can say if graduation year is not equal to nil, then do this. Um, so then. It, we haven't given it anything, so it is nil. So it will leave this and won't go through this. Um, but in order to use that variable, you have to unwrap it. So this is the syntax we use. We say if let year equal graduation year, print the year. So what this does is this says, if graduation year is not nil, assign it to this variable year, and then print year. Um, here in this example, because we did not give graduation year a value, it's going to leave this. But if we did say graduation year equals 20, um, it would go through, it would say graduation year, if it's not nil, it's not. We're going to give the value to year 20, and it will print 20 right there. Does that make sense? All right, cool, cool, cool. So I'm going to go to the app now. So just to give you guys an idea of how it works, I'll show, I'll show it to you first. So this is the working app. <clears throat> Basically, um, it generated random numbers, so I can say something like 40, and it'll say higher, so I can say 50, higher, 70, lower, 60, higher, 65, lower, 63, 62, and I got the number right, so it says, congrats, play again. Yeah, so, pretty simple, so we'll go through it right now. So. If you're on this page, you're going to go to Create New Xcode Project. Um, it's going to be a single view application. And just give it a name like Guess the Number. I'm going to say Guess the Number 3 because I've made this like eight times. So, make 
sure you have storyboard selected, not SwiftGI in the bottom? Oh yeah, that's also vital. I have that. I did. Okay, so once you have the single view app created, um, everyone should go to the main app storyboard. And we're going to add the three elements we saw. Um, we saw a label, we saw a text field, and we saw a button. Um, so if you see this, go up here to this plus sign in the corner and just search label, or the label right there, label, and drag a label onto the scene. Well, they put a drag. And then search for text field and drag it onto the scene as well. And then search for a button. So the three things I searched were label, text field, and button. If I'm going too fast, also let me know. I will slow down, I'll redo whatever you guys want me to do. Um, so now that you have these three elements on the view controller, just highlight them like this and we're gonna just center them horizontally. So you're gonna click on this symbol down here in the corner, and then click horizontally in container, and this will align everything to be in the center. So, you didn't see what I did. I did that, and I clicked this. Um, so now that we've done that, we're gonna do some Bad auto layout. We'll learn more about auto layout in the coming weeks, but for now, just do what I do. Um, we're just going to set this top label to be 50 from the top, and make sure that this symbol right here is red, and then click add one constraint. And then we're going to make sure that this one is 50 from the label. So click here. Make sure that this is set to label. It'll automatically say that if this is like underneath the label, but make sure that this is a label. And then set this to be 50. And then add that constraint. And then do the same for the button. Right. Check here to make sure that you see the text code. And then set that to be 50. Is anyone behind, by the way? entire session to explain what he's doing right now. Yeah. Like in two weeks. So now that you guys have done that, um, go ahead and change your label to say guess the number. Let's just be the title. And you can, you have the option to like change the font over here if you guys would like. Um, you can set it to be bold if you want. We'll set it to be semi-bold. Um, here, I'm just going to set this, the width of our text field to be a little bit longer, we'll say 70. So that I just clicked here, I went here, and then where you see width, you can change the width, make sure it's checked, and then click add constraint, or add one constraint. So when I added these to, actually I'll just add them again. So what I did was, I added a label to our scene, right here. And then I also searched for text field. I'm gonna add that underneath the label. And I'm gonna search for a button. So we have a label, a text field, and a button. In order to get them horizontally in the, go, in the view controller, just highlight all of them. You can just drag like this. And you go down here to where you see this symbol. 
and you can click on horizontally in the container and that'll just align everything perfectly. Um, so like, I, like Malik just said, we're gonna learn about auto layout later, but for now, just right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our label and we're gonna say, we're gonna set it to be 50 from the top. And we're gonna set this one to be 50 from um, the label that's ab above it. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the button. We're gonna set the button to be 50 from the text code above it. And I'm just gonna change this to guess the number. And I'm gonna change this button to say submit instead of button. And like I said, you're free to play over here, change the size, change the font, um, however you like, the color. Um, in our text field, I'm just gonna go down here to where we changed our um, constraints and we're gonna set the width to be 70. Cool, cool, cool. Can you do that one again? Yeah, so you it again? go to your text field and then click down here where you see add new constraints. And then where you see this width option, you can change this to be whatever you'd like it to be. So I said to be 70. Um, and you just click this box and then click add one constraint. Cool. All right, cool. Um, so now that we've done that, we're gonna connect our label, our text code, and our button to our view controller file. Um, so what you see right here is going to be this kind of this plus button, like a pane. It's just gonna add a new view. Um, so that we can see our view controller file and our storyboard. Uh, when you do that, make sure you go up here, sorry. Make sure you go up here to guess the number three, guess the number, and then click on the file that you want to edit, see alongside. And then this, oh wait, I don't know, don't do that. Can you guys see fine? Is this zoomed in enough? Does anyone not have two screens up? So what I clicked was this add editor on the right in the corner. Are you change the left screen to be the code? So what you're gonna you're gonna go up here to the top where you see these labels okay. and you can literally navigate to the file that you want to see. Yeah. So I want that to be that. I can do that, I can go over here. And set this to be storyboard. So you want view controller on one side and main desk storyboard on the other. <clears throat> um, so now that we have this, everyone have it on two sides. Everyone can see both the main desk storyboard and the view controller file. All right, cool. So we're gonna comment this, say mark, and then just give it all our variables and underneath this we're going to put all our variables this is just helpful for structuring your code you can actually use like a menu up here to search different parts of your code um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to but it is helpful if you have like a lot of code in like one file and you want to like search through them quickly right here you'll see where I have variables right here um, so we're gonna do what we did last week we're gonna, we learned how to do control drag to our um, from our storyboard to our file so just click on the label click control on your keyboard, and then click and drag from the storyboard to your file. I can do that again. Control, click. Um, and you're just gonna name this title label, or whatever you'd like to name. And we're gonna do the same thing for our text field. So I'm just gonna name this numbers field. And then we're going to do the same thing for our button. For our button, though, we're going to make sure that it says action when we connect it. So up here, we see connection. Make sure this is an action. Um, this basically will create a function that will be called whenever that button is pressed. So just name this submit tapped and click connect. Does anyone mean to do those three connections again?
So we want to keep track of the number of guesses that they um, that they get, so that when they finally get the answer, we can say you took you like 80 tries to get it. Um, so we'll create a variable right here. We'll say var number of guesses, and we'll set it equal to zero. And you can put that right underneath your number field. Um, so now that we've done that, we're going to figure out how to generate a random number. So the app needs to come up with a random number for you to guess. Um, so we're going to create a function called generate random number. So just say func generate random number and do open close parentheses and then open curly brace, closing curly brace. Um, and basically when we create this random number, we want to make sure that we have a lower bound and an upper bound. Um, so what we're gonna we're gonna have ours be one from one to one hundred. Um, so you can go ahead and create those values as well up here. So underneath var number of guesses, just go ahead and say var lower bound and set that to be one, and then say var upper bound and set that to be two. Oh wait, no, what? Set that to be one hundred. <laughs> one to two. <laughs> it's either one or two. <laughs> Um, and then we also want to have the value. We, we want to store the value that it came up with. So just create var and then say number to guess and let that be of type int. And this is implicitly unwrapped optional. Learn about those later too. Don't worry about it for now. But basically, this is like an optional except for Swift allows us to pretend it's not. But if it's not, then the app goes crazy. But it's okay. We're pretty sure, we know this is going to be an integer, so we don't have to worry about it for now. Um, so in your generate random number function, say number two guess, let that be equal to int dot random, and then say in colon, and then put your lower bound, and then do three dots, period, 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 and then do upper bound. Um, so basically, this is going to generate a random number in between 1 and 100, inclusive, say, inclusive, um, and set that to be number two guess. Um, so does everyone have that function written? We good? Was that space or dot? Three oh, dots. Oh, those are three dots, yeah. this um, generate random number method to be called whenever the app first loads. So in your view did load method, this method is called every single time the view is loaded. So whenever we first boot the app, we want to make sure that we have a random number generated. So just say generate random number, um, and that'll call this function whenever the app starts. So that number two guess will have a value. Exclamation point. That's the implicitly unwrapped optional I mentioned. So like, we um, it's going. We basically know that this is going to be an integer. We create. We have a function here where we give it an integer, and then we make sure that it's called and viewed load. So we're like, 99.9% .9 sure it's going to be an integer. But basically, this exclamation point is going is here to say it could be nil. Um, and if it is nil, your app's going to crash. But we're playing it safe. It's not going to be nil. We're good. Hopefully, maybe we're good. So now we're going to start writing our submit tap code. So whenever they tap submit, we want to take in the number that they've typed in and then validate it to make sure that, to check if it is within the bounds and also like where it stands, like with the number. So if it's higher, if it's lower. Um, so in your submit tap function, say if let guess equal number field dot text 
So what this is saying is the number field, this number field has a variable called text, um, and it can, it is an optional type, it can be nil or it can be a string. If there's nothing typed there, it's nil. Um, if there is something typed there, it's a string. So basically what we're doing here is what I showed you guys earlier in the slides. We're basically saying if number field dot text is not nil, set that value to guess. If it is nil, it's gonna leave this loop. It's not gonna go inside. Um, so because it's a string, we also have to turn, turn it into an integer. So what we'll do is we'll say if let guess int equal int guess. <coughs> so basically this is doing the same thing. This is, this is an optional type. It's like int question mark. Um, and this is making sure that it is and we're gonna give it to guess int. That makes sense? Um, so now we're going to also, we want to increase our number to guess, or no, our number of guesses. Our number of guess, guesses is greater to plus equal one, because we're keeping track of how many times they press the submit button. And now we also want to validate that guess. So we're gonna write a function called validate guess. So just type func validate guess. And then we're gonna say guess. That's gonna be of type int. Open curly brace, close curly brace. And then after you have that written, call it in your submit top function. So say validate guess and give it the guess int. So that was kind of a lot of steps in like two seconds. So do you guys need me to like re-say what that was? Yeah. What's the use of the underscore inside the function? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a syntax rule? It's not a rule, you don't have to do that. This basically is, we're like, Valley, can I explain that? The underscore, it's like we're not using it for, um, oh yeah, okay, so when we call this function, if we have like a value here, like we say like number, then like whenever we're gonna call validate guess, we would have to say like number is of type is like guess int. So like this basically allows for like Swift is like can look really pretty and like sound really nice when you read it if you like have like things like this. Like you can say number guess, so it's like validate guess, number guess int. But like you don't have to do that. You can just say underscore. And basically when you call it, you won't have to put that there if you don't want to. You can just say validate guess, guess int. You know what I mean? So it's like the name of the parameter? Yeah, basically. There's like a better explanation as to how that's helpful, but <laughs> that's yeah. kind of it. So like, we can just say <coughs> num guess, and we'll do this, num guess names. And yeah. actually like, oh, what are you gonna say? You see that in a lot of constructors, like the controllers and stuff? Yeah, like that. Yeah, it's like really helpful like when you're like writing your code and you can like see it right there and it'll tell you like what to put so you can put guess int. But you don't have to put it there if you guys don't want to. You can do this if you like. It's not necessary. So as a general practice, whenever you don't have to put or whenever you are putting parameters and you don't want to name them, you put an underscore in front of each yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in our validate guess function, we're gonna check to make sure that the guess is within the bounds. So if we say if guess is less than lower bound, or our guess is greater than our upper bound, then we wanna show the alert that they need to guess something between one and 100. So we'll say show alert, and we will create a function later, but you can go ahead and call it right now. It's gonna be red, because we haven't created it yet, but it's all right, we're gonna create it in a second. So just say show bounds alert. So like, as you see, we don't have it. Actually, let's go ahead and write it so that we don't have that sitting there. So just say func show bounds alert right there, and then we'll be good. We'll create it in a second. Um, so if the guess is in between our bounds, we can say else if our guess is less than the number that was randomly generated. We want the one chance of title label to 
to say guess higher. So we'll just say higher. Oh. And we'll say else if guess is greater than number two guess. We'll change the title label to say lower. And then else, if it's not, if it's in between the bounds and it's not lower and it's not higher, that means they've got it right. So we'll say the number was guessed correctly. And we'll show the when alert. So just write show when alert. We'll write that function in a second. And we also want to change our title label to go back to what it was before, guess the number so they can play again. We want our number of guesses to go back to zero. We're basically resetting the game. And then our last step is we want to generate a random number again. So it's not the same. So just like we created that show bounds alert, we create another function called show win alert. And this red should go away. Um, and this is where we're gonna put our alerts. So actually, right here, create another mark and say alerts. So here, you'll see alerts right there in the highlights. Um, so now the first step is, oh, is everyone caught up to this part? Did everyone get this part? Good. Um, so in our show bounds alert, we want to create the alert first. So we'll say let alert equal, and then type UI alert controller. And then if you do an open parentheses, you will see lots of options here that can like just like automatically write the code that you need. So I want you guys to scroll down to where you see title, message, and reverse style, and just press enter and then all of our code is gonna be right here. Did everyone say how I did that? I'll do it again. I'll say let alert, the type UI alert controller, open parentheses, scroll down to title, message, preferred style, and there you go. So the title of it will say, hey, we're yelling at them because they're out of bounds. And the message will say is, We'll say your guess should be between. And in order to put our variables lower bound and upper bound into our strings, you can do backslash, open parentheses, close parentheses. And this allows you to put variables inside of strings, so you don't have to like concat concatenate like plus sign. You don't have to do all that. You can just do backslash, open parentheses, open parentheses, close parentheses, and you can say lower bound. And then we'll say an and, and then do the same thing, so you can put an upper bound. I'll we'll say upper bound. And then period. <laughs> and then for the preferred style, click on UI alert controller.style and just set it to be of type alert. That's dot alert, by the way. Sorry for not mentioning that. Period alert. So now that we've created the alert, we want to create the action, basically like the OK button for them to click. So we'll say let action equal UI alert action, and then open parentheses, and the same as before, look for the one that says title and style, click on that, and it should open up to this, it should like write, automatically write the code for you. Oh yeah, oh, I don't know why this has been open so that. And then for the title, what we'll say is, we'll say, got it. Cool, cool, cool. And then for the style, 
set it to be dot default, and then for handler, set it to be nil. So this is what it will look like. And now we need to add that action to the alert. So what you'll do is you'll say alert dot add action, and the add action function takes in an action, a UI alert action, so just type in action. So now that alert has the action, so that when it presents itself, it'll have the option to okay or got it, and it'll go away. You only need to understand somewhat this code. Like, you don't need to actually understand everything. Just know that you're creating an alert object and adding an action to it. And like this code, you can find it online everywhere if you forget. presses or completes that action, that code will run. Like when you say, okay, you press on the button, okay, the code that you put there would run. But in this case, we don't have anything, so we put nil. Like if you want to keep track of the number of times they were out of bounds, you have a function that says increase the amount of times. And like you can have that function be called inside of this one. It's so like whenever they click okay, it'll be like, all right, that was like eight times they're out of bounds. If you wanted to know that information. It's not really like helpful right here. But we wouldn't do it right here but later when we get into it, you'll see how it's really helpful. So it would be like an asynchronous block of code. It would only run once they press. So, um, so now that we have the action on the alert, we'll just say self.present, and we'll say alert, comma, animated, so it to be true, and it's that completion to be no. And this is similar to this. You don't need to know what this does right now. So we're going to do the same exact thing for the show um, for the show win alert. So if you want to copy and paste all that code, you can. I'm going to write it out just in case something was behind. Um, so basically, I'm just going to do the same exact thing. We're going to say let alert equal UI alert controller, um, and then set the title to be like, congratulations, congrats. And we're gonna, change, we're gonna set the message to be you won with a total of, and then like we did before, we'll do backslash, open parentheses, close parentheses, and we'll put number of guesses in here so that they can know how, how long it took them. And then for preferred style, we'll say dot alert. And then we'll create our action just like how we did before. We'll say action equals UI alert action. The title we'll give it will be play again. Then the style will be default and the handler will be nil. And then we'll say alert dot add action. And we'll add the action just as we, just as we did before. And we'll say self dot present alert animated to be true and completion to be known. So, same as that code. Oh. The only difference is here, I mean, there's differences in like what we said, but also the number of guesses in, is in here. We did lower about an upper bound before. Everyone cool to this point? should be the app. We'll run it. I'm running it live in front of you right now. I haven't run it since we started, so hopefully it works, but we'll see. see you guess the number, you can see our text build, and you can see our button right here. If I type in 45 and click submit, it'll get a higher. Type in 70, 
So higher. If I type in 90. Oh, wow. Got it. Dolphin <laughs> going to me to go lower. <laughs> play again. That was cheating. Um, we'll say 40. Lower. 30. 